is uh, Jay Harwich with a very special edition of the Amazing Meds Alumni Podcast. It's an old podcast. We said some old players, and I'm an old PR guy. You know, first up, we have Robert Ventura, a member of the NL Championship team in 2000, uh, Cliff Floyd from the uh, Eastern Division Championship team in 2006, and Daniel Murphy from the NL Championship team in 2015. You guys, I'm looking at the release. You know, the game is going to be August 27th, 60 years of Mets baseball. You know, it's kind of sad for me. I've been here for 42 of the 60 years. I guess that makes me kind of old, but I'm I'm kind of looking forward to this and renew some old memories. Because um, let me start, I want to get a couple of things with you out of the way before I begin. Your your old table at Chili's, you're going to have a party next December to retire the table. And the owner want to know, could you make it? <laughs> You know, sometimes, you know, I wish I could just curse you out. <laughs> no, I just want to be nice, Cliff. There's, there's a special ceremony. And <laughs> is that a yes? Absolutely. No? <laughs> yeah. Tell them to send me a limo. I, I will. Uh, Cliff, the other thing, guys, I want Robin, I want you, Danny, to know that Cliff is a part-time doctor. Of <laughs> course, when I was in the early 2000s, <laughs> I had a bad ear problem. And after each game, Cliff used to come into the locker room and clear my ears out from Cliff, I want to tell you, 20 years later, I'm good. I can hear you. Thank you, though. I just almost puked. It, it was actually... <laughs> <laughs> it was something you could ever imagine coming out of a person's... Well, you fixed left. me up, though, Cliff. But I, I, I don't know if it's possible to ever see something <laughs> nasty again. Well, did you guys have a meet before today? Did you guys know? I mean, into one, did you guys... Have any interaction with each other before today? Not a lot. I've seen these guys all my whole life, but not a lot of you know interaction. But yeah, you never met, met Robin before, or, or yeah, Robbie, you we were just at the Trev Stories yeah. event, right? Same, same golf tournament. Yeah. Did you cut the nets down on that? No, we lost by one. Oh, yeah. good for you. I don't think we were. Even, no, we weren't that close. Well, Robin, let me start with you, you. You know, I was speaking to Ty Pratt the other day. Let me let me backtrack a second. When you walk in here on August 27th, what's going to be your fondest memory of coming back, putting on a Mets uniform again? You know, tell me, what are you guys feeling like when you walk into City Field, you know, and and go into the home locker room and and what are you guys going to be feeling? Whoever wants to start off. Well, I think that it'll be different because I, you know, didn't play at City Field, but I, I think it's whoever shows up i think it's the guys that you play with uh it's the guys that you didn't play with that you still wore the same uniform uh you know there is a a a community feeling about that when you've played at a place whether you played together or not but i think the guys you play with i'm sure there'll be some stories that um you know I, i think you know back then we didn't really there wasn't a whole lot of phones being video and things so it was a little bit easier to have fun and, and uh, it didn't really get out unless we wanted it to get out, which was the, if you remember this, it was the John Oldwood, Ricky Henderson story. Yes. That's how we find out how long it would take to get on TV. And it was three days. Yeah. That was started by Scott Lawrence and our trainer. He made yeah. the whole thing up. It got to sports illustrated too. He was a little, he was scared that it would get out, but it was a really good joke. So I, <laughs> decided to go out in the locker room and kind of say it loud enough for people to hear it. And right. to this day, we have kids on my team here that think that's a true story. Good. Rob, can you give a big quick synopsis? you want to tell them what the story was? Well, Ricky had hit a home run or hit a ball off the wall. It was kind of going, you know, it, it was kind of getting his way out of there. And, and they ended up, did they release him or trade him? They released him. Okay, they released him. And... They, he, he signs in Seattle and Scott Lawrence and said, yeah, you hear what Ricky said when he walked in Seattle? And I was like, no, he goes, he looked at John Oler and goes, man, I played with a guy last year wore a helmet just like that. <laughs> and Scott made the whole thing up. He made the whole thing. I was like, yeah, I know that was me, Ricky. <laughs> so, oh, Pete, that's true. When I managed Joe McEwing and I had to tell people like players, like that's not real. That, that did not happen. And they go, yeah, read this story. I said, 
I know what you're saying, but I, you don't know the whole story. It was, it never happened. Danny, how about you coming back uh, with putting the Mets uniform on again? Yeah, I think um, coming back through city will be, I think I, I, I get the sense I'll fall into a bit of rhythm, you know, cause I did it for, you know, starting in 2009 and then through 2015. So, you know, you're going to, going to hit the weight room on the right, take a left straight down to the clubhouse. Um, I'd like to take David's old locker if I could and just make my home in there like the whole way. I like it's a done deal. We can get it set up. Pictures and want all sorts of things. And I'm going to, I'm going to have my way with that locker if I can. I'll put it back the way it was, whoever owns it now. But um, yeah, that's going to be my locker. Yeah, before uh, I move David. on the clip, I, I tell you, one, I want to, uh, well, honestly, the years you were away, I never booed you. I used to clap under my under the, the seat so nobody would see me clapping because I know you didn't I, want to leave New York. So I, I didn't boo you once, just for you to know. So, Cliff, tell me, how about you coming back? Daniel, not for one second do you believe him. Definitely booed your blast. And one, take an oath every time. Trust me. I know that song. So, hey, um, it's going to be fun, man. I Look, I'm, I'm the same as Robin. I, didn't, I mean, I stepped on that and Walked on the field at introductions, but I didn't play. So I'm really looking forward to the fans. Like I said earlier, I'm looking forward to seeing the fans, man. Like, I, I mean, I posted it today when I never post anything. I put on my story and, like, the amount of people that hit me up. Some, you know, just laughing at the fact that my old ass going back out there. And then some just, and, and you know, amazed and, and grateful for the opportunity to get out there and watch this game through the roof. And, you know, a lot of teams do this, but I think this is special in its own way. New York is different, unique, and uh, it's going to be a blast. And I just can't wait to get back, for real. Cliff, how, how disappointing that, and maybe that's the right word, 2006 season, we win 97 games, beat the Dodgers three straight in the, in the, in the playoffs. Um, you know, you hit, I think, 444 against the Dodgers, and we lose game seven. Uh, in, in against the Cardinals when Yanni and Molina did, did it again, maybe for the first time, two or at Homer. And how many times have you been asked the question, why did you bunt? Well, I wish I had a dollar for every time I asked me, hell, I wouldn't be working right now. <laughs> but, um, I've been asked a lot, but, you know, man, I look back at that situation and, you know, Willow, he he made a executive decision. I mean, I know I couldn't run. So I'm like, well, if I, if I bunt it too hard or whatever, and I'm not going to bunt Hey, I didn't bunt my whole life. Right. So, um, could I've got a bun down if he asks? I'm a damn sure try. It was, I mean, Adam Wainwright wasn't throwing 98. Like, you know, you look at some of these guys today and I'm like, how are you expecting him to bunt against a guy throwing a hundred? That just seems impossible to me. But um, I look back on it, and you know we fell short. And I, I mean, I think that situation was you know, the hero or the goat, and I wasn't I wasn't the hero. So well, there was other things involved in that game. I mean, in sixteen, we had bases loaded and went out and didn't score. Did you think when Andy made the catch that we were going to win? Hell yeah, but I was old. But you know, I mean. It's just, it's always one pitch. I mean, you got to get the final out with your, with, with your team leading. We didn't get it done. So, you know, it sucks, man. Every time I come back to New York, you know, you got a couple of people to still remember and they still say the same thing. You know, you, you should have bun it. And I'm like, well, 6'4, 250. If you see me bun, there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the lineup was constructed for you to bun. In it, Cliff. I, I, you know, I'll just say, look, I don't think he could. If we had one more guy on the bench, could have bunted. He didn't want to bunt. Oh. Mur Murph, let me ask you through your career, you really battled through a lot of injuries. I remember with the last day of spring training, you hurt your knee. I mean, you moved around. You look at back, I mean, you feel like you, re I mean, really had a great career, overcame a lot, switched positions. I mean, talk about what do you look at? Look at you look about your twelve year career. We look back and think. I've, I've had a chance to look back at. It. I look back at it with a, with a really a great deal of, of gratitude, to be honest with you, because like 
like I'm not going to convince by no stretch of the imagination was I a good defender. So like I had to like be even more productive offensively because I just wasn't very good on defense and they tried to plug me all different places. And like, it was kind of a square peg in a round hole at second there for a bit. But from that, like, I just, I'm really grateful. Like I got a chance to play, I think in New York in a way that was unique to the time like guys don't get to grow the way I did and get those at bats and those reps I faced left-handed pitching all the time and that was they could have run anybody out there and they chose to let me go out there and I think that that helped me I say it certainly helped me later in my career because I got a ton of reps against left-handed pitching when we weren't a really good club but I got a chance to play whereas now it's it's a bit more platoon and so yeah I have a great deal of gratitude for the amount of reps I got for you know early in my career in New York. Hey, Robin Lamas, you, you came as a free agent from the, Chicago. What did you hear about playing in New York? I mean, you know, you, the, the, the big band, New York, the press. What, you know, what made you decide to come to New York? Well, I heard you're an ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. You lived up to the billing, didn't you? Didn't you, Jay? <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I didn't, you know, we never played there for interleague or anything. Uh, when, so I, I don't, I was never there, uh, in a, in a weird twist, I had run into Tino Martinez in the off season. He was like, you know, they got a good thing going on over there. You would probably be a good fit there. And I, I didn't think too much of it. Uh, I know I was supposed to get traded the year before and it never happened. I don't know if it was supposed to be there or, or something else, but uh, you know, you start looking at the team and I know that they came up short in 98. And uh, when they started talking, you know, I had a couple other teams that were, you know, but it, it didn't seem like a right fit. And this one just, and it, it, it did. It ended up being great for me. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, Fonzie was playing third base and he switched to second and, uh, you know, it, it just felt natural. The, the first day that I got there, this team wise, it was, I went from a team that was super young, you know, they had kind of gone into a rebuilding and then I go to a team that really had a lot of veterans and a lot of quality veterans too. just good played hard, uh, had a lot of fun, hang out on the road. It, it, it was very natural. Okay. Well, well I'm only happy. I want to just talk about what you guys are doing now. Robin, you went, you went back to school, getting your degree, I think in May, an assistant coach with Oklahoma State. How did that come about, you know, going back to school? Um, I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing anything. I was at home, and uh, I'd come back to a football game and, and ran into – Josh Holiday and Matt Holiday and, and Matt had just become the volunteer here and he was like I gotta come back and and do this and I was like eh, I'm not you know I don't know if I want to do that and so when I finally started looking into it I had to be the student coach which meant I had to do school that kind of became a problem for a minute because I had to I had to think my way through that but uh you know finally I was like you know, let's just do it. Let's just, you know, knock this one out. And, and it's been great. Uh, you know, I'm having a lot of fun. The, sc the school stuff is, is as hard as you'd think, but uh, I'm getting it done. You a good student, Robin? Made the Dean's list, Jay. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. He's got receipts. <laughs> Dean's list. <laughs> receipts, Jay. He's got receipts for you. Murph, you went back to school too to Jacksonville, get the degree, and you know you told me you did some radio work. And what do you? I mean, I know you have the kids, but were you, are you still doing the radio stuff back in Jacksonville? Yeah, I, I do radio like once every other week here. I get a chance to watch Cliff on MLB Network. You're fun to watch, Cliff. Like I really enjoy you on there. Like I text Seth. Like I'll text Seth when I see you on there about how good you are. Um, yeah, and I the the classes. I don't know if this like the classes I've been doing. I've been reading more so kind of well I don't have nearly as much to do as I did there for like you know 25 years basically when we were hitting baseballs so I've been doing audiobooks and, and and kind of reading some stuff I went through the revolutionary war which was a lot of fun um a bit of our history and yeah golfing yeah. I do a lot of golfing okay 
Cliff, did you think you would, you know, as a player, you know, and you have a great presence on MLB Network, a lot of other stuff. Did you? How did that evolve for you to get where you are now? To be honest, no, no idea, no clue. I don't. I don't think you ever consider yourself, you know, TV personality. I don't know. Maybe you do. I mean, Michael Strahan. If I was getting paid twenty million dollars a year, then I'm a TV personality. Now I'm not a baseball player. But you know, when you when you're doing it, it's um, you have to find your lane and stay there. And I don't. I, don't, I started with radio. Um. I kind of got to learn how to talk, Jay. Hell, I mean, I still know how to talk, and I'm, I only got a high school education. I'm not doing what these cats are doing at the bottom of the screen I got on right now. So I I, I, I love the sport. Um, very hard to talk about your peers. I know how hard the game is. I have to be careful. So I think the one thing that I learned across, along, along the way is uh, when season starts, dedicate the time to, to making sure you know what you're talking about. And – Showing love to your boys, too. I mean, you got to be hard at times because people, you know, I, I don't care what people think, really. But uh, you, you do feel like you have to be on point. You can't just be like, well, I think D's going to, you know, uh, pull out of this slump. But why? You know, is it because he's too close to the plate? Is he away from the plate? You got to pay attention to detail. Um, and last but not least, I have a lot of freaking fun. I do. I, 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 you know, I get the, I want to play golf as he doing every day. I want to get down there. You know, I do get a lot of golf in, but, um, being on, you know, it's, it's freaking makeup in a suit, Jay. I don't know what the hell to tell you. I don't know. <laughs> Cause I mean, all three of you guys are alike in one way. You're all relieved in the locker room. You know, as a PR guy, one, you need a guy in the locker room that's going to be there when a team loses, when it's, when it's easy to stand in front. All three of you guys, had that same attribute. Could you just talk, man, would you have me clip? What made you become, you know, the spokesman? I know you tutored David and other people. What made you kind of assume a leadership role in the locker room? Um, I only did it because I kind of knew um, how to handle that, I guess. Uh, um, I had really good role models in Montreal. I think it really helped. <clears throat> It did. I mean, I had great, great, not only play, great dudes, great people. And it helped me, it helped me tremendously. I was able to take all what I learned and just pass along. I don't care if you soak it up or not. It didn't bother. I wasn't there to make you drink it. I was just there to give it to you. So and it was fun, man. In New York, I mean, I knew how hard it was every single day. I didn't know what to expect. I, I come from, you know, a small market team, so I didn't know what to expect. I just felt like, Oak, you know, like they, boo, you know, they, they go. And once they boo Piazza, I knew I was like, I'm fine. They boo him. I'm good. You, can, you boo my Piazza, then you can boo me all day. And that's when I, kind of, I felt comfortable. I was like, hell, I'm good. So um, lead, lead, leadership, you got to want to be a leader. And you I gotta, remember in the world, and two things with you, so forgive me for bringing them up, but just really a testament to what kind of person you are. You're playing left field one day in Miami, and Santana was pitching. You dropped the ball. I think it might have cost us a game. After the game, you're right there in the locker room. Uh, game four of the World Series, you made an error at second base, led to a couple of runs. You didn't run. And you're always very protective, talking to the younger guys. How did that evolve with you, Daniel? Well, I think – Part of the gig is that we get to go out there and express ourselves at baseball, which I love. But part of the gig also as an entertainer was like, we go and explain ourselves and the media is the conduit to the fans. And like, if I, I guess I figured if I, if I was going to stand in my locker when they asked me questions about home runs, then I need to be the person that stands in my locker when they're not asking about home runs, they're asking about the exact opposite. And then again, to watch the way David stood up, because I was a bit shielded, uh, I would say a bit, quite a bit shielded, because they would go to David first, and then they would, you know, possibly come to me. But David was the one who took the brunt of it in those, some of those, in those lean years for us, kind of in the, what, the 2010, um, heading through there. So I guess accountability, you know, and I know that David learned that from, from Cliff and, you know, and, and then Robbie's, um, you know, guys as well, too. So that's the way I looked at it. Robin, I, I used to hate it 
when I, you like to always, if you went over four, you like to talk about that more than when you got a, a hit or a home run. You really never like to talk about yourself. Am I correct in that remembrance? You mean you walking over and me not liking it? Or yes, perfectly oh, fine. Oh. Yes, no, but you always you you didn't like to really. I I, I never really entered into your vocabulary much, hardly at all. Yeah, yeah. You guys all know what it's like when he's walking over to you because you're like, oh, here it goes. And you know, and like Daniel said, you can't say no to Jay. Well, so difficult man to say no to, Jay Horwitz. It, difficult man to say no to. Can't do it. Uh, I don't know. It's just, e it, I just find it easier to talk about my teammates than it is about me. Or if, like, doing bad, I mean, I, you know, I've done bad. I've, not played well plenty of times and I can talk about that and be honest about it. But I, it, it, it might be like something like Daniel said, if you talk about it when it's good, it's going to go away. <laughs> don't want, I don't know. I just, it, it was just something like, I still got to come out and do it tomorrow. So yeah. I don't want to and act like it's over. So you try and write it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the bad stuff, I'll talk about that. Cause I want that over. <laughs> good, good point. Hey, last round of questions, guys. Hey, Rob, I was speaking to Todd Pratt the other day, and you know, I, I think I've told you this before, but he blames a grand slam single on you. He said all of your grand slams were towering uh, fly balls, and this is a line drive. So he misread it, and that's why he came to meet you at second base. Uh, uh, any truth to that? No, that's what, are you guys? That's what, are you, are you that's what he said. It was your fault because you didn't hit the normal grand slam. It's my fault because I hit it over the fence. But, but it, it wasn't. It wasn't a line. It was a it, line drive, and fence. he thought that it wasn't going to go over the fence because all yours were pop flies that went over the fence. So he blames it on you. Okay, I I, I ain't buying. I ain't buying any of it. I even tried. Okay. To, oh, I tried to tell him to keep going. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> like he wasn't warned. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I stopped at first base. Forward we go. And then, <laughs> well. Murph, let me talk about 2015, a home run in six straight games, seven all the total postseason. Does that ever get old talking about that? Uh, well, it depends on what your definition of old is, Jay. I don't really like having a whole lot of attention on me, but to say that I don't enjoy looking back on those moments now that I can slow down a bit and maybe appreciate them more than when we were trying to win a World Series that year is, and then when the career's going on. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I look back on them like – really fondly but again it's each time I look back I'm able to extract something new from it if that makes sense and so the further I get away the more I'm kind of willing to look into it you know and because when you're when you're playing I don't know if it's like this for you guys but even at the I say the end of my career the last couple of years I didn't look back on in any of the achievements because there was like you had like they were coming for you that night at like seven o'clock whether you wanted it or not so like to deflect my attention to somewhere else didn't feel like it was going to help me post that night and be productive. So now I've kind of started looking back on it more. Yep. Cliff, your legacy with the Mets, you had uh, over 80 home runs, close to 300 RBIs. But isn't it more important your legacy, what you taught David? Isn't that just as important kind of a legacy for you looking back on your career with the Mets? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Jay, I'm like that. I'm like D, man. I'm like, I just want to play. I'm not a historian of the sport. Like I like, I love the game, but I'm just not like. I I, I knew what I wanted to do every time I got to the ballpark. What I, what I did for those guys was it wasn't special. It just was like what I mean. It was like when I when I was 20 years old in the league, Marquise was like, "Get off the bus and take a taxi to the park. You'll figure it out." I'm like, okay. Larry Walker's like, "Do this." All right. Now I didn't make D, D Wright carry my bag because of that. I mean, I was more like, you going you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this right here, and you'll be fine. I knew he's gonna be a great player, but like all the other stuff, man, I, man, I just want to be real. I want to win, so I, I wish you could be with a bunch of dudes like these cats right here, like just want to win, take that, take the spotlight, put it somewhere else. I want to get the dub and try to go for that chip. Yeah. That's what I. That's all I cared about. I mean, that if you want to say my leg, that's that's the legacy I want to carry. Well, you know, legacy. I want to win. Well, you three guys got great legacies. Tell you what, guys, I'm really looking forward to August 27th. We hope to have about 50 to 55 guys in uniform. 
uh, we'll have a little game introductions. Uh, it'll How be many nice. outs are you going to make us get? Uh, it's not an unreasonable <laughs> question. It's not no. an unreasonable question. How many outs are we going to have to get? What, what, no, I mean, we'll, we're not going to have strikeouts. No strikeouts. You, hey, you play until you, yeah, you hit heard, the ball. Jay, you know what I'm going to enjoy the most about it? What's that? Is Cliff's going to be running closer to me right now than I <laughs> was like him when I was playing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, I never had that much to gain at that point. <laughs> so I haven't lost a lot. But I'm sure those fast guys, they're losing a lot. And I know all <laughs> <they're a little laughs> turn and something else. I'm still yeah. running pretty close to the same speed. <laughs> we're, no, we, we're going to have gosh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010. Oh, man, it should man. be great. It should be a lot oh, of good man. memories. And, you know, it's a good time in New York. And our owner really wants to make this happen, Mr. Cohn. So I'm looking forward. Again, I can't thank you much for the times. And I'm really, it was my honor to work with all three of you guys. And I'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of months, guys. All right, guys. Cheers, okay, Jay. Cliff, my ears are good, Cliff. Thanks again, bro. Y'all have a good one. All right. Thanks.